2023. Seriously, what is going on? Is UFO disclosure actually happening? Is our world about to change forever? Is this the biggest story in the history of planet Earth? All federal government records relating to UAP should be preserved and centralized for historical and federal government purposes. They should all have a presumption of immediate disclosure and should be eventually disclosed to enable the public to become fully informed about the history of the federal government's knowledge and involvement surrounding unidentified anomalous phenomena. This is not speculation. This is no. Congress saying categorically information has been improperly withheld. This is historic. It wasn't always like this. Things in the UFO world in the years before 2017 moved very slowly. People were, of course, still having sightings. They were still interested. Books and documentaries were still being produced on the subject, but it didn't seem to be moving forward. The architects of the cover-up must have felt their job was now done and done well. People like Colonel Philip Corso could come out with a best-selling book telling the world about the reality of Roswell, alien contact, alien technology being integrated into the modern world, and the mainstream media could carry on as if nothing had happened, that the UFO story was just that, a story, a silly entertaining piece of modern folklore that only the profoundly credulous and fans of science fiction could be interested in. In 2017, however, that all changed. The New York Times published an article on their front page in December of 2017 that revealed the existence of ATIP, a hitherto secret governmental program for studying UAPs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, aka UFOs. Revelations followed about the Nimitz encounters of 2004, with testimony from trained military observers giving credence to the existence of a truly anomalous technology operating in our skies, and apparently oceans, with impunity. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. That is the LNS, dude. Well, if there's like Look at thing, it's rotated. Uh -huh. Can you box moving target? <laughs> no, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Look at oh, that, man. Look at Three videos came out, viewed by millions, which the Pentagon later confirmed were real. Since then, credible people like Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Dr. Gary Nolan, and more recently David Grush have been coming forward to push the U.S. government to take action to disclose the truth about the reality of UAP. In 2019, the Wilson Davis notes were leaked from the estate of late Apollo astronaut Edgar Mitchell, which revealed the details of a conversation between a vice admiral and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Thomas Wilson, and a physicist, Dr. Eric Davis. In it, Wilson says he was denied access to the secret alien technology reverse engineering program, despite his high rank in the U.S. government. The document has withstood intense scrutiny, has never been debunked, and remains essential reading for anyone interested in this topic. In May 2022, at the first UFO hearing in Washington, D.C. in over 50 years, the Wilson Davis notes were submitted into the congressional record. Other than that, followers of the topic were generally disappointed in the hearing. The two governmental spokespersons answering questions seemed to brush the subject off as mostly identifiable objects, such as balloons or camera artifacts, not addressing the testimony of hundreds of trained military observers or the evidence of radar data. They also seemed to conveniently ignore the wealth of historical evidence from the 20th century about the phenomenon, instead focusing on much more recent events. Many in the UFO world began to get a little pessimistic about the chances of the truth ever seeing the light of day. Then, 2023 happened. It started in February with a brief but feverish news cycle involving a Chinese spy balloon. It was ordered to be shot down over the coast of South Carolina and was swiftly dispatched with a Sidewinder missile. However, things got stranger when three more objects were detected. One was shot down over sea ice near Dead Horse in northern Alaska. The object was very different to the balloon, the size of a car, and was flying at 40,000 feet without any obvious system of propulsion or control, officials said. 
Another was downed over Canada's central Yukon Territory. Officials described this one as smaller and cylindrical, flying at 40,000 feet. They said that the object that is, I guess, uh, of interest here in all of this that was shot down over the skies in Canada earlier today was cylindrical in shape. That was the that is the exact word she used. The final object was even weirder. This one was described as being octagonal in shape, with no payload, flying at 20,000 feet. It was shot down over Lake Huron in Michigan. Widely assumed in the mainstream media to also be balloons, these strange objects were in fact described by General Glenn Van Herc, the head of NORAD, as not being balloons. Yeah, so I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason. Uh, certainly the event off the South Carolina coast uh, for the Chinese spy balloon, that was clearly a balloon. These are objects. Uh, I am uh, not able to categorize how they stay aloft, but clearly they're, uh, they're able to stay aloft. Have you ruled out aliens or extraterrestrials? And if so, why? Because that is what everyone is asking us right now. I'll let the intel community and the uh, counterintelligence community figured that out. I haven't ruled out anything uh, at this point. We continue to assess uh, every threat or potential threat unknown that approaches North America uh, with an attempt to identify it. They were objects, they were flying, and they were not identified. In other words, they were genuinely UFOs. This fact was further corroborated by what happened next. Following the shootdowns, some senators were given a classified briefing by the Biden administration. Far from clearing up the matter, senators emerged seeming bewildered and shaken up. We don't know what most of them are. So bottom line, you're kind of walking away from this thing still having a lot of questions. Yes. Yes. We have, we have unity and confusion. On the one hand, the administration is saying we don't yet know what these last three objects are and we don't want to characterize until we recover them. But on the other hand, it wasn't a threat. Both of those things can't be true. The only thing I feel confident saying right now is that um, if you are confused, you understand the situation perfectly. What I took away from, from the briefing today more than so than the briefing last week is that uh, this has been going on for a long, long, long time. Hold on. Um, at, at, at least 2017. Lock your doors tonight. Thank you, sir. As of July 2023, the three unidentified flying objects were still not identified, and no debris from the objects was ever apparently recovered, at least not officially. Then on June 5th, former Air Force officer and intelligence official David Grush came forward and said the U.S. has indeed retrieved craft of non-human origin, both intact and partially intact, and has been doing so for decades, as far back as the 1940s. No serious attempts to discredit Mr. Grush were made by anyone in authority, and the Inspector General of Intelligence, who had seen classified evidence provided by Mr. Grush, deemed his claims to be credible and urgent. In a TV interview, he also stated that along with the craft, alien bodies were also recovered. As, fan as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. This bombshell exploded in the UFO world. However, mainstream news chose to mainly sidestep the story, as certain Republicans like Marco Rubio and Tim Burchett came forward to support calls for public hearings to investigate the claims. Naysayers took the blinkered view that this was a partisan issue, cooked up by UFO believers and paranormal enthusiasts. However, nothing could be further from the truth, as proved by what happened next. On the 14th of July, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, a Democrat, led a new bipartisan effort to establish a commission to declassify all documents and any materials, including hardware or biological material, related to UAP. Called the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023, this legislation represented a watershed moment in UFO history. He said on social media, I am honored to carry on the legacy of my mentor and dear friend Harry Reid and fight for the transparency that the public has long demanded surrounding these unexplained phenomena. I have never, I, I truly, I'm just gobsmacked at what it says. As you say, the number of references to non-human intelligence, somebody of the seniority of Chuck Schumer, 
the Senate Majority right. Leader, one of the most powerful people in the Congress, is explicitly saying this is real, is explicitly saying things have been improperly withheld. For years, the word disclosure was key for ufologists fighting for transparency. Stephen Bassett of the Paradigm Research Group coined the term truth embargo for the cover-up, which stretched back to 1947 and the Roswell incident. The late, great Stanton Friedman called it a cosmic watergate. Disclosure was a paradox to many. Richard Dolan described it as impossible, yet inevitable. Nobody knew realistically how it could be achieved, yet it was inevitable. Such a huge secret would only fail to be concealed in the long run. Critics of UFO commentators, who tirelessly documented and spoke out against the truth embargo, implied it would be impossible for anyone to conceal such a huge truth about our world, our universe, and our place in it. And indeed, although they did a great job of largely keeping it from breaking in the mainstream media for 80 years, the secret was never properly kept. We had 80 years of UFO and alien lore spilling out into pop culture, countless movies, documentaries, TV shows, and books both fictional and factual, telling the core story of the UFO reality to a global audience. It was always out there, no matter how good the cover-up was, right from the first press release after the Roswell crash, which casually proclaimed the U.S. Army had captured a flying disc. Now, with the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023, it's finally become official again. Disclosure is inevitable. It's now the law. We hope you enjoyed this video. We are always working on new videos about this endlessly fascinating topic, so please be sure to subscribe to not miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.